All right, today I'd like to talk about uh, slide protection. And uh, the first thing I'd like to say is this. I, I hear guys all the time talking about a man's side and a zone side. And uh, I, I, don't, I, I get confused with that. You know, all I know is this. Let's say this is the man side, so to speak, and this was the zone side. And there was a pirate. Well, you're sacked. I mean, you're, 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 you know, to me, it's all man. Okay, it's all man. Or you could, I guess you could say it's all zone, but it, it really, it's man. I mean, what we're talking about basically is four down and the point etc and so on we'll get to that in a bit but you want slide protection to be like second nature to your guys um you know especially in this day and age of one back you know everybody thinks that i'm a, like a zone guy i'm not i'm i'm just a line coach you know and i know that you gotta you gotta throw the football to win okay uh but you want this thing to be reliable you don't want it to be fancy you don't want it to be sexy uh you want it to work in the two-minute drill in a high-pressure situation, and everybody knows what's going on. And I believe uh, that if you have slide protection and the C-gap zone and a screen and a naked, we can go play a game. I mean, that's just the way I feel. And this this is the old reliable. This is the F-150 Ford. Okay. So what we're, what we're talking about is this. We got five linemen, okay? And usually when we're talking slide, we're talking six-man slide, the quarterback being the seventh man who's got to handle the seventh blitzer. Uh, he's hot. But what we're talking about, and I'm just going to draw birds up here because they're easier to draw. We're talking about five linemen that can handle four down linemen and one what we call the point. We don't call them the mic, we call them the point. Because if this is the mic and we happen to point Sam, I, you know, it's tough, especially for the running back. You say, well, we're pointing him, he's the mic. Well, no, coach, you told me he's the Sam. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get it, but right now he's the mic. No, 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 he's just the point, okay? So we're gonna, we're starting and we're gonna go from the right here. If this man is a threat, whoever he is, a bird, I'm going to put him just as a, as a bird, okay? If he's a threat, we're going to point him, okay? And that's that's the end of that. If he's in here, he's a threat, and we're just pointing, we're just calling his jersey number, and everybody's looking for it, okay? So if he's number 66, or if he's number, it could be the corner, it could be the free safety, whoever that quarterback or the captain of the ship decides is the most dangerous threat and the guy that he wants to put the lineman on he points him okay it's as simple as that okay now the, in order to get this to work and who has who we have to know who the ends are okay and we we need a captain of the ship i prefer it to be the quarterback because that forces the quarterback and the quarterback coach to actually learn how, that there's 22 guys on the field okay um you know, it could be the center. Could be, I, I think I think the tackles could do it, to tell you the truth. But what we're what we're doing from the right side, okay? If that's the point, the most obvious guy, and this is slide protection, the most obvious guy to take him would be the tackle. Okay, if we move him in here, okay, you could argue that that it's either the center or the guard. We just say it's the guard because he's got better it's better leverage if we move them in here it's the center if we move them over here it's the left guard if we move them over here it's the left tackle and that's as simple as that and all we have are codes you know uh, you know uh, outside inside middle outside uh, inside outside middle okay whatever your code i'm not going to give you our, our codes because i might i might have to go against you someday but the first thing we need to do is know who the ends are and how many down there are, okay? Starting with four down, we say we determine who the ends are, and the ends are the contained guys, and then we count one, two ends. There's always going to be two ends, and there's two inside the two ends. Two and two is four. It's a four down, okay? Guess what that is? Three down, okay? Guess what this is? If we feel like these guys are ends, and just because it looks like three down, we think these guys are big, strong guys that are ends, five down. Okay, 
you know, the, the bear defense, of course, five down. We don't, we don't want to get confused. So what we say is by personnel, these are the ends. Now, if we had a prowl defense, you know, where there's like everybody's moving around like this, okay, we try to determine who the ends are, and we just make them ends, and then everybody else picks up everything. Everybody else, we, we call it a point. So if he's an end, the tackle's probably got him. He's an end, the, the tackle's probably got him. If the point's out here, then it all expands, okay? And it's to, to us, it's, it's pretty simple. And, and uh, this system has been good for, um, I, you know, I coached in it for quite a long time. But um, the last the last year at uh, Ball State, we, we gave up 11 sacks and 460 throws, and um, you know a couple of those were on the backs, and you know a couple of those were we didn't do a lot of three step. A couple of those were you know play actions and stuff like that. Not a couple, but let's put it this way: we don't give up many sacks. Okay, um, so you know it's a simple simple thing. Now what we like to do especially against three down, okay, I'm gonna, I, this, now I'm not going to draw birds, is we really like to try and force it into making it a four down, okay, because there's always going to be somebody, Khalil Mack, somebody like that, that we just don't want, he's the X factor, we just don't want a back blocking him, okay, and I'm going to switch pens here, because this pen looks like it's it's seen its better days, okay, so this is Khalil Mack, and, and he played for Buffalo, and we had to go against him in a two-minute drill. He murdered us, but we won. Um, but we don't want to back to block him. Now, if he lines up here, you know, it's a three down. Uh, looks like three down, but we're saying it's four down. He lines up here, he's four down. He lines up here, he's four down. He lines up here, he's four down. He spins around. We call him the spinner. Okay? He's a designate Lawrence Taylor. Okay? We just don't want to back on him. Okay, and that's pretty simple, pretty easy. So, if wherever Khalil Mack is, he's down. So, sometimes they take that guy and we, they'll stick him right in here. They call him the Will linebacker, they'll stick him here. It's four down. Okay, I, it's not a big deal. And that's run and pass. The great thing about this is is it's run and pass. Okay, we don't fool around. Uh, we, we try, like, again, we're, I'm into F-150. Okay. Now, the one thing I, I, we, we, we say it's man, but let's just say we had a point call in four down. Okay, let's, I'm going to draw my birds. Okay, and we had a point call right here. I'm going to make it a P. And these two guys were involved in the point call. Okay, we would say that this is either a center, a rip, or a right, and I'm going to give you those, a rip or a right, okay, and uh, the right means the guard has them, the rip means the center has them, and what we're saying is these two guys will never cross each other, so if the point comes here, the center's got him, he's got the, he's got the down guy, if the point comes here, the guard's got him, center's got the down guy, it's pretty simple, we play long, we don't shut each other off, we got to play with our hands long, okay, Obviously, if you're going to do that, and we really don't want, the reason we say rip or right is when we say rip, it means that you're going to take most of them. I'm just going to be there to help you. When we say right, it says you're going to take most of them, okay? You're going to take most of them. I'm just going to be there to help you. We don't want to shut each other off. Now, we don't cross these two guys on a rip or a right, but if this guy goes this way, we don't want to try and force a three-way ex ex uh, exchange. So what, what happens is, just like any other rip right, this guy will get onto him, and he'll just sort of pick out. And that lets the tackle just work by himself. Okay? And it's been, it's been pretty successful, because now the tackle doesn't have to worry about a three-man exchange. You know, when you run the football, you can't really do something like that. I mean, I've seen guys do it, but... Uh, you know, but when you're throwing the football, once you got a rip right, this he he knows he's got him. He knows he's got him. He's no know, knows he's got him. Now, if these two guys switch, you know, if they exchange, yeah, they'll switch it off. But they're off the point. We know who has the point. Okay, either the right guard right or the center rip. And like I said, we always have a direction. But if the quarterback decided, 
that that guy was a point, even if the, the protection was right, he'd call that out, and guess what? It'd be a Liz or a left. I'm giving you all my codes. Okay, but that's okay. I'll change them again. All right? So the court, I mean, the quarterback can point over here. Okay, he can point over here. He can, he can point whoever he wants, and we train him that way. Okay? So there's a reason for that, though. Okay? The, the, the protection, okay, has a hot side and a sight side. And the hot side, we're trying to keep it on the, the, the call side of the protection. Okay, so if, we're, if our protection is right, we want the hot side to the right. I'm going to try this pen again. Okay, and we want the sight side, sight like eyesight, to the left. Now what we say is this, if the quarterback points this guy and he comes, we're not hot. But it takes one, and we don't duel the, the linemen. We, you can, okay, and we duel the backs. We do all kinds of stuff. But basically, this is what happens. If this guy comes, he's out of the equation, so it only takes one, okay? Now, this guy and this guy, all right, are taken by the back, okay? So the center is occupied over here, the tight end's over here, I mean the tackle's over here, and these three guys are shut off. Now, there's, there's a possibility over here, okay? The sight side takes two, okay? So getting off the point, if this guy hits it, the back's got him. If he hits it, the back's got him. If they both hit it, it's a sight. Okay. And what we try to do, again, is make it simple. Make it easy. Okay. So this guy is built in sight, and this, this hot side is a break off. Okay. So this guy right here, he's running a route off of a possible blitz, and usually this guy right here. Okay, the, 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 um, the receiver is going to be running a, a, a built-in breaking route, okay, and then he'll exchange, you know, we have, we tag those things, there's all sorts of things, you know, quick out, post, comeback, something, something that will time up with the quarterback having to get rid of the ball, and we always protect from the inside out. So if we have a, the, the point on the right and this guy coming, Okay, we're protected. If he's coming, we're protected. If they're both coming, we break it off. Okay, we don't care if this guy comes. He has nothing to do with it because he's the point. If that guy comes, we kick it. Now, we, you can dual read this. We, we don't, we have protections that do that. But what we really like to do there is go coast to coast. So, and it's pretty simple for the back. We just say, this is a 4-4 type alignment. Okay. When that man starts to cheat over here, it's probably going to come from this side. If the quarterback points him, okay, the back will go from coast to coast, figuring he's in coverage. Okay. He'll go from inside to his side, the sight side, and then he'll check outside to the hot side. So we basically don't, we don't throw under duress, okay? We're, we're in pretty good shape with that stuff, okay? And again, this is the, the outback is what tells us what's going on. If that man cheats over here, maybe the, maybe the quarterback says, you know what? He's in coverage. I'm going to, I'll throw off of him and point him, okay? We, don't, we think this guy's in coverage. We have too many receivers over here. He's got to be in coverage. This guy's telling us that these guys are possibles. I'll point here. Okay? But in any event, let's say he points over here. Let's just take these guys right off the field and say he points over here. Again, the quarterback points. We know that guy's end. He's done. Okay, the back is inside out. If the quarterback were to point out here, okay, all right. Now we're going to do this. Okay. We're going to go, we're going to put the lineman more than likely the tackle. And now the back will go one to two. All right. And the reason that the quarterback is pointing out here is because he feels as though this guy's the most threatening guy. We feel like both of those guys can't come and he's probably in coverage. 
Okay, somebody's got to cover the back. Now, you know, you get these rush to cover deals where they send this guy and he blocks and then he sees that and he, he goes and rushes it. But, you know, hey, great. You can get that done. You're, we're good for you. I'm happy for you. And again, we, it, it doesn't matter if we're right or wrong as much as it matters if we're all on the same page. Okay, we don't want to give up sacks. We want to be on the same page. Okay. Um, we never, even though, even if we dual read alignment, okay, which, which we haven't in the last couple of years, but if we dual read alignment, if it's four down, we're going to dual this guy. Okay. Um, if we dual read alignment, we will never ask him to go coast to coast. I learned that uh, with Bill O'Brien at Penn State. His, the Patriots never asked the center to go from the right to the left. It was always right to the right, or right inside <clears throat> to right outside, never never right to left, okay? And we wouldn't do that. But the back, we feel, can do it. We think he can go coast to coast, okay? Now, getting into a little bit of technique, okay, and I'm going to take all these guys off the field now. I hope you can see this, Okay. And we're, we want to form a cup, okay? Well, a cup looks like this, okay? And in order to form the cup, what we want to do is have the tackle set a little deeper, favor setting deeper, and the guards and centers set a little wider. So they set the depth of the, of the and this is nothing new. I mean, this is not a big deal. Now, we had uh, we had a guy in, um, and I don't, want to, I don't want to name drop here, but uh, he said that they only did this versus a five down or three down look. And I started thinking about it. I said, well, why, why don't we do it all the time? What's the difference? Okay, and it, it worked out pretty good for us. And I'm not going to give you specifics. I'm, all I'm saying to the tackles is you're the furthest guy away from that quarterback. Okay, you can afford to set a little deeper and form a cup. Now I am going to talk about about a concept that I think we're really pretty good at. And I gotta okay, I gotta switch this paper here. I never said that I was Cecil B. DeMille. Okay. Get this page. Okay. We have a we have a term in run blocking called rotation and what it means is you, you turn to your guy and you give up your zone. Well we have a, 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 a pass protection thing called vacate, okay? And I just want you to talk, think about this for a second. Here, here you got a nice end here, and here you got, say, the Sam Backer. And we're going to point to Sam Backer, okay? Well, the tackle says, well, this, this is easy, coach. You know, you told me if the Sam Backer's a point that I got him. Right tackle's got him. Right tackle's got him. Okay, great. But how does the right tackle have him, okay? Does he, does he get with Okay, well, yeah, yeah, coach, he's, he's gets with. Well, that, that's no good, okay? Um, he does not want to cross this guy blindly to get to him because this guy might bait you and go, and here we go. Now you're lost. You can't help, okay? We don't want to turn too soon, okay? We already said we're going to get a little depth. Well, the wider you have to go, okay, to get to your guy, we don't talk that way. We say you got to go a little deeper. Okay. Now, by going a little deeper, you can see both of these guys. And if this guy baits you and bails out, well, guess what? We, we call it a rewind. It's just like running the video back. Okay. You're setting, just rewind back and grab this guy. Okay. It's pretty simple stuff now, man. Pretty simple stuff. Okay. And guess what? Let's say he presses. We don't change anything. Now, you know, if you got Lawrence Taylor pressing, you probably you probably need some help, and we'll talk about that in a second. But again, we don't want to cross him unless he is, you know, he when he comes, go get him. But get your depth first. Put your hands on this guy if he tries to put his hands on you, because if he grabs you and tries to shut you off, that'll be a sack. Okay, so you want to get away from him a little bit, okay, but put your hands on him. Now, this is this is key now. All these fundamentals, these run fundamentals, condensing, playing long, okay. 
rooting your feet. If you give a little ground and don't root your feet, this guy will pile drive you. Okay, if you stand straight up so you're not condensed and you're easy to push around, he'll pile drive you. Okay, and if you play short, you'll get trapped. If, you're, if your arms are close to your body, this guy will trap you and you won't be able to get to that same. Okay, so you have to play long with your hands. You have to be condensed so that your body is short. It's a short target and it's a short lever. Okay, and you have to root your feet so you're not sliding around on oil. And if this guy does hit you, he won't be able to completely shut you off. Okay, that's that's just the way it goes. Okay, those those fundamental that's physics. It doesn't change. Okay, it doesn't change kinesiology. It doesn't change. Okay, your your techniques might change a little bit. Your opinions might change a little bit. It might go from the wishbone to the single wing. You know, I don't know. But the physics of it are never going to change. Okay? And physics is simple. If you give a guy a long lever, he's going to use it. You don't want to give him a long lever. You want to give you want to give him a short lever. You want to use a short lever when you need to make a lot of force. And you want to use a long lever when you need to make a lot of speed. Okay, that's a different subject, but we will... We will continue. But anyway, let's just say we do have uh, Lawrence Taylor out here. And I, I'm running out of board. I'm going to tighten this, these splits up. I never talk about splits, by the way. Okay, but let's just say we have Lawrence Taylor. I should I should make them up. Like that. Those guys make a lot of money. Okay, and we have to set him. We chip. Okay, and what we try to do is either with the back, or you can do it with the tight end. We never did it with the tight end, but you should. Okay, as you set vertical, and this guy's coming hell bent for election, and you don't you don't just keep going. You never want to set more than two steps with your outside foot. So one one outside, one inside, one outside. That's it. Okay, make him come to you. Maintain your leverage. You have leverage. Okay, leverage is advantage. There's a quarterback. I, I don't know. If you draw a straight line, you're you're in this guy's way. If you go way back here, guess what? He's going to go inside you. If you go way out here, he's going to go inside you. If you turn your shoulders, he's going to go outside you. Stay as square as you can for as long as you can. Stay condensed. Don't turn to this guy too soon. Okay? And the, the, the secret to that Okay, when you do this, let, let me talk about chipping first. But anyway, the back will come over and he'll chip this man if anything shows. Now, if the guy two gaps you, he, you're on your own. But if he's trying to rush the edge with speed, he'll blow him up for you and then get off. And when I say chip, I mean chip. I don't mean he buries his head in the guy. I mean, he's just, the back's use shoulder chip. But you've got to play long enough with your hands so that you're not buried on this guy okay you got to give that back access to chip if you're if you're all hugged up in this guy you got your face in the guy's chest you're gonna get chipped okay so you don't want that all right and to tell you the truth that's the way we do it with everything like if we're gonna if we're gonna rewind let's just say we do this okay and we're we had that point out here okay and and he rewinds and grabs him and he's got the nose because it's four down. And he's got the nose. And he thought he had the end. Okay, he's setting a little while. He'll rewind. He doesn't turn. He goes right back, just, just like the camera started over again. He rewinds. He might have to get a little depth. And he shoulder chips this guy. He shoulder chips him. He doesn't kill him. Because once he shoulder chips him, if he does it right, this guy's on the ground. And now he can continue. He can get a little bit of depth and maybe help out another guy. Okay? We don't want to commit to guys that aren't our guys. Okay? We just don't want to do that. All right? We, we, we really we want to make sure that we're giving help, but that we're, we're helping everybody. And if you do this right, especially in four down, you should have a, a chipper every time unless there's a blitz. Okay? The chipper should be the guard, say, in the back or whatever. Now, the tackle that's away from the back, 
Okay, the good news is that's usually the call side and the quarterback can see that thing coming. But that's also usually the slide side. So the center or the guard is available. So if this guy grabs him, okay, and he rewinds to the nose and chips him, and then all of a sudden the tackles are having a hard time getting beat, well, guess what? Help him. Okay, but when you bury yourself, you know, and hey, yeah, I want to be physical. I want to hurt people. I want to do. I want to be tough. I want everybody scared of me. You know, great. Well, the quarterback is going to be scared of you. He's going to say, "Well, what is this guy doing? He's murdering this guy, and this guy's killing me. Why? Why, why doesn't he help somebody?" Okay. So again, to reiterate, okay, chipping is how we help. Don't vacate too soon. Okay, don't turn your shoulders. And probably even, you know, an inside guy, same thing. Okay. Why vacate? Why, you know, you have the end. Okay. Everybody, everything, everything is saying that you have the, you have the end and the center's got, well, if you turn your shoulders, that center's got a hell of a long way to go. That's a tough, that's a tough thing. Don't vacate. These guys got to come to you. He's not getting any, any width. Okay. So if you get just a little and you get just a little, you're all kind of helping each other out. Okay. You're all kind of helping each other out, all right? And if they define themselves, it's great. And if this guy bails out, he rewinds, grabs that, and guess what? You're back in there helping the center. Okay, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, okay? All right. Um, this this is something that Coach McNally has been uh, talking about. And he, he does a lot of film study. Jim McNally is a, you know, emeritus uh NFL guy that uh, he happened to coach me in college and uh, he he convinced me of this and I think he's right if I have to set that man especially by myself and I'm not right guard okay don't worry about post setting okay guess what he's if you think about it he's not on you he's wide so the wider he is the deeper you step and you can you don't need that post foot you know you, you don't always need a post foot okay once you get in front of this guy you can get back to a post relationship okay so don't go this way or even that way if, if he's wide enough and he's your guy go that way and if you look at it it's not that radical it's not that radical of a deal and if you get in front of him now, now you get into your inside out post where your outside foot is back Okay, and that's a brick wall situation. When you have your feet staggered, you're a brick wall. It's a little tough for you to go to the up foot. It's real easy for you to go to the back foot. I'm talking about uh, moving in, uh, back and forth. But you are really stout if you're condensed with a stagger against a bull rush. Okay, and we talk about you know guys hop hopping and all this mud walking. I, I, I don't know. I, I, we haven't had to do much of that, especially the inside guys. Now, maybe it's because we were gigantic, but, you know, I don't know. Other people are gigantic, too. I don't see many people doing that stuff. And, you know, they, they do a lot of drills and talk about it a lot, but they don't they do not do it. Okay. Now, let's just talk about a twist. Okay. And we'll go over here because this has been the slide side. You two cats are by yourself, right? Okay, and hopefully a chipper will get out of here, you know, who knows what. But basically, these guys are by themselves. Everybody knows, you know, the tackle has to anticipate when there's a three technique. He has to anticipate TE. Okay, well, we're already sort of anticipating that by, by setting like this. Okay, but if we do get a TE, remember, the tackle can't really see it. And, you know, you like to say, well, he's going to feel it. Well, if he gets a little depth, he might see it and feel it. But he's really going to feel it if this guy gets a little width and snaps him, snaps him, and throws him out. Now I'm not going to go. I'm not going to try and draw a technique here on the film. I mean on the uh, on the uh, board here. But he wants to take that penetrator and flatten him out as much as possible. And with him getting a little bit of depth, guess what? That works out pretty good. And he, as soon as he sees what we call a sack dance, okay, in other words, this guy steps up the field maybe a, a step or two, and sometimes he puts his hands next to his ears or, you know, they, they head fake, and then he wants to come looping. As soon as he sees anything that looks like that, make sure you got your depth. And for the tackle, it's easy, but a guard doing it, okay, same thing, okay. 
Make sure you got your depth. You see that that kind of goofy sack dance stuff. Get depth. You don't know which way it's coming. Okay, and whichever way it goes, move that way. Okay, because you're going to overtake the twist. Okay, so getting back to this thing, you're snapping him out. You see that coming, the sack dance. You come and overtake the twist. And again, play long. Play with your hands. Because if you play short, you're going to shut each other off. Okay, stay as square as you can for as long as you can. Okay, you get a little wider, you get a little deeper. Make the switch. The guy that has the looper calls the switch. Don't let this guy do it. He might do it in a game, but if he does it in practice, I rip their ass. Okay. He is in charge of it. Okay. He is in charge of it. All right. And what they do, it's pretty simple. Okay. He comes over, takes over, take, he snaps it out, gets a little depth, picks up the looper. Okay. And now, you know, he could, we don't really like to do a three-way exchange. So if that looper, if that looper's in a pirate, we'll track him. Okay, we'll track the pirate. Okay, I know these drawings stink, but that's that's just me. Okay, it's not the best stuff in the world here. Okay, again, I can't emphasize this enough. Take little steps, drag your tail, condense your tail, drag your tail. It's the easiest way to accelerate. Okay, acceleration is change of direction and change of speed. If your if your legs are straight can't change you can't change okay you got to both guys got to play long okay um snap be loud and firm on the overtake when this guy calls switch he doesn't want to go switch he wants to go switch and scream it in the other guy's ear and be firm now you know guys like uh, there's a good friend of mine uh, george de Leon, he he physically bumps this guy off I don't know, maybe I've seen them do it in practice and I'm sure they do it in games, but I I, I just, I think that he has got to define this guy. He has got to define him, okay? He has got to, now sometimes they grab, okay? And if that's a grab, you can bump all you want. It ain't happening. If you get a grab, he yells grab and he'll, he'll go around and track it, okay? And, you know, you say, well, boy, there's a lot of talking. No, it ain't. It ain't, it ain't a big deal because it all looks different. It all looks different. All you got to do is show it to them enough times, okay, in practice. And I mean like two or three times, and they, they'll be okay. And if they can't do it, you know, you got you to have some other answers too. But uh, the other answers are usually full gap schemes. And, you know, I, I think that if you spend your time on, on this instead of, you know, running – 17 now if your quarterback can't throw yeah i run 17,000 ways to run power but if your quarterback's worth worth the protection you know let's protect them because we're going to win games in two minute drill okay all right now i got a couple of tricks for you um one i was going to show you it's called a wrench but i'm not going to show it to you uh, you uh i'll do it when we do technique but what i do want to tell you is this Okay, when you have a situation five down, okay, that's five. There's two ends. There's two big. There's three big guys between the ends. Okay, we we don't gap it or anything like that. We just go man to man. Okay, but we tell this center if he's a right-handed center, we tell this center, you are going to set like a right guard. Okay, and and um, a guy that played for me at. Um, and Elon basically taught me this, okay? And I, I learn a lot from players. I try to listen to players, okay? But I'm snapping with the right hand. I want to step. I want to sh what we call short set, okay? With that, with that foot, okay? And try and get my left hand up and try and get my right foot back, okay? And if I'm in good shape like that, okay, if I don't step this way, okay, and, you know, we used to double kick, too, which is fine. Okay, it's just not as firm. Okay, but basically, these guys are going to protect that center. Okay, he's just got to protect himself. Okay, this is his snap hand, the right hand. So he wants to keep that snap hand coming late. Okay, he wants to get this hand on the guy quickly. All right, so he snaps the ball, gets that hand on him, moves, it, forces him to go to the snap hand, and then he's just playing him like a right guard. Okay, 
makes sense. And we'll and we switch all this stuff in here. You can just watch the video, and, you know, this game video. You can watch it. Um, and we don't we don't mind seeing five down. We kind of like it because we know what the coverage is. Okay, but that goes that that also. Let me let me go to this. Let me show you this thing. I don't want this thing getting too long here. Okay, there is a uh, a deal that we do. Okay, you know everybody wants a zone blitz. A zone blitz. We're gonna zone blitz. Okay, so what they have, you know, you know this is the famous zone blitz that you know everybody runs. You know, I don't know. It's great. It's great. You know, it's scary. It's just that. And the other. I don't know. Um, we will usually force a a sand point here. Okay, we we'll point him. Tackle beyond. Little depth. Little width. He's stuck, man. Okay. And these two guys are stuck, man. Well, the, the zone blitz is a long stick, a rock, a loop out, a cop, and then bringing these two cats right here. All right. So the back is going here to here. All right. Great. Okay. The tackle's got him. The center is going to stay with the rock. Okay. The guard is going to stay with the loop. The tackle, when he sees this man cop, he rewinds and grabs this thing which triggers him to go help that center, okay? He can't trigger until the, the tackle rewinds. The tackle can't rewind until he sees the cop. You can yell out cop if you want to, okay? But we didn't have very much trouble with it. And all we're doing is holding down the fort. The guard's going to stay at the end. He's here. The back comes here because he's the next man to the sight side, okay? And everybody's happy, okay? Anyway, like I said, throwing is important, but catching is more important, and protection is what uh, gets you to be able to do both, all right? Uh, sorry for the drawings, but hopefully I gave you a little information that you like, okay? And the phone's ringing, I better answer it, because it's probably the lottery. <laughs>